So what's up guys, welcome back to another video and what is the very beginning of a console mod series for Skyrim Special Edition. I did this quite a bit for Fallout 4 back when console mods sort of first came out which I do plan on continuing by the way, I know I've said this quite a bit in the past but uh, that will be coming back sometime soon on the channel and I thought you know why not do it as well for Skyrim Remastered and I do want to mention something at the very end of the video because I'm not entirely sure how to continue going forward with this series, you know, I'm still going to do it, but the way in which I do it is going to be sort of determined by you guys, because as you all know, the situations between Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are very different, and I don't want to leave any consoles out, so yeah, at the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit more about that, and I want to hear some of your guys' feedback in the comment section down below. As always, if you guys do enjoy this as a series and do want to see it continue on the channel, uh, be sure to let me know by leaving a like down below. And also, just to kind of mention real quick, the mods in this video, majority of them will be available for both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 as well, you know, just to mention there. But enough talking, jumping straight into the video today with the first mod. This one's known as Dovahkiin Keep. Now Dover King Keep is one of the first I guess player home mods available for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and uh, isn't too far from Windhelm on the map and uh, the good thing about this as well is that as soon as you go into game once you've downloaded the mod uh, no matter where you are in game you could be at the very beginning it will allow you to fast travel here pretty much straight away. Now what's really cool about this is the fact that it's a large castle that you pretty much have all to yourself. You can store a bunch of stuff in here. It has well over 100 mannequins so you can pretty much create every different possible uh, armor combination in the game and have them on mannequins to actually display which is really really cool uh, about this actual location. And I mean, that's really just the beginning. This thing has a ton of features and stuff that actually goes into it. Again, starting from the outside here, you've got like a nice little farm going on on the left. Uh, you've got pretty much all of the crafting stations on the outside. Again, this is where you can pick up uh, a ton of stuff at the very beginning of the game. If you want, you can just go straight here, uh, get some basic weapons, you know, gear, a bunch of different crafting materials and coins and stuff like that as well. Uh, as you progress on the inside, there's literally tons of different rooms uh, for you to go into, some of which actually have some items you can go ahead and loot as well. Uh, off to the right, you have the armory, which of course is where all of the mannequins and where you can put, you know, pretty much all of your stuff on display. Uh, to the left, you have a bit of a barracks that has some basic weaponry, a few display cases in, uh, beds and stuff like that. You've also got like the forge downstairs in the barracks as well. And uh, in there in the chest is a ton of stuff. Straight away, you've got like 10,000 gold in there. Um, a bunch of different basic, you know, weapons and armor and stuff like that. So you guys get the general idea here. This thing is big. It's got a ton of space for storage. Got some very, very basic items. All of your crafting needs that anyone would want. And overall is a very, very awesome location to keep all of your things and put a lot of stuff on display at. So let me know your thoughts on this mod in the comment section down below. And that leads us into our next mod, which is a very, very basic one known as Rich Merchants of Skyrim. And this is by Mika Ghost. Hopefully, I didn't completely butcher the mod author's name there. But again, this one is very simple, right? I mean, it's just a mod that increases the extremely low vanilla merchant gold level to 10,000 gold for every merchant in game. So if you're somebody out there who doesn't like the already low vanilla merchant gold level, then this mod is definitely for you. Of course, it won't be for everyone because it does break immersion, but you know, it's a mod, it's a very basic one, and you guys can check it out if you really want to. And again, that goes for the next mod, which is another pretty basic one. This one is Sigic Robes, and this is by Mika Ghost again. Now this mod adds the Sigic robes to the crafting menu so any player can craft these. In the original game, these clothes could only be worn by certain NPCs and there was no actual way to acquire them. While this mod adds the recipes to the game so they can now be crafted and worn by the player or even your followers. Or if you have Dover can keep, you can go ahead and put it on display there as well as one of the armor sets there. A brief description of the robes, they are in the light armor skill and they do provide protection close or better than hide armor in the game. So they aren't the best in terms of, you know, damage resistance or anything like that. However, they look pretty damn badass. You gotta admit, these definitely do look awesome and it is definitely a pretty cool clothing and armor mod available for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And for those of you wondering, they can be found in the MISC section of the Forge Crafting menu and only require leather and leather strips to make. So you can make them very, very early on 
and in my opinion, a very, very cool clothing mod there coming in from Mika Ghost. Talking of cool mods, why not check out Fenderix Magic Evolved by Fenderix himself. Now this is one of the largest and most comprehensive spell mods available right now for Skyrim Special Edition. It adds over 360 new spells to the game. Uh, just to name off a few of these spell archetypes, you have you know Darkness, Earth, Divine, Poison, Wind, Summon, Elemental, Familiar. That's just naming off a few there again, there's a ton more. But it has a ton of features that come with it. Not only can you utilize these new archetypes to create interesting spell combinations and enjoy sort of new role playing options, but you can summon nearly every creature found in Skyrim. You want a skeletal dragon? Well, summon one. You want a frost troll? Well, you can go ahead and summon one. Like seriously, this thing has so many different options and combinations for you to choose from. You can even have one where you can literally like shoot a barrage of arrows from your hand. You can give yourself enhanced speed. There is so much to choose from with this mod that it's definitely up there in one of my favorite ones so far for the consoles. Now what's really cool about this is the way the mod authors added this to the game. You know, there's two ways you can go about this. One is to just play the game normally and that as you progress through the game you will be able to find these bucks in several locations, uh, buy them off merchants and stuff like that which is really cool. Or alternatively if you want to jump straight into the mod and have fun with some of the new stuff uh, you can go to a chest in Dragon's Reach that will literally have all of the spell terms in there for you to go ahead and pick up. So it really allows you to sort of play and use this mod how you like, which in my opinion is really, really cool. So one of my favorite mods available right now for you guys to check out if you like. And that leads us into the honorable mention of the video. And the reason why this is an honorable mention is because it's only available for the Xbox One right now. This is the Open Cities mod. Now this mod pretty much makes it so you can go into any city in the game without loading screen. So, you know, you wanna go into Whiterun without a loading screen? Well, now you can. You can simply just open up the door and ride straight in there on your horse. And that's what the mod aimed to achieve. It really wanted to make the cities feel like they were more of a natural part of the world, that you could just walk in and out without a really annoying loading screen. And that's what I love about this mod so much. Like you can literally just ride straight into Whiterun now on your horse and ride straight back out. You know, although it's a very basic one, this one is really, really cool. And uh, hopefully this does come to the PlayStation 4 soon. I, I don't think it uses external assets or anything like that. So hopefully we can see it on PlayStation 4 as well. And I had to add this in as an honorable mention because when I was playing it, I just really enjoyed it. You know, the added immersion and realism really does go a long way uh, with mods like these. And for the final mod of the video, this one's really going to be 50-50. Some of you guys will like it and some of you guys really won't. This is the cheat mod for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One by the real Eleonora. Now this reminds me of the cheat room mod for Fallout 4, where essentially you could go straight down into this cheat room and it will hold every single item in the game. Well, this mod pretty much does the same thing. And uh, I guess starting off, we can uh, talk about the first things that you'll notice. And that is right next to Ward Maiden's Forge in Whiterun, you'll notice a few chests there around the side of the building. And uh, inside of those chests, you will find pretty much every single crafting ingredient in the game. You'll also find a couple of strong boxes that will be literally full of thousands of gold that you can pick up. Uh, there'll also be rings of increased carry weight, which will increase your carry weight by a ridiculous amount. So you won't have to worry about that uh, again if that is something that you're interested in. But more interestingly, if you go around the very back, you'll find a trap door that leads you to the vanilla editor smoke test cell, which pretty much contains every item in the game. Like seriously, every item in the game is inside of here. Any books, any weapons, any armor, any clothing, any spells, you will find it all within this location. It is quite spread out. I mean, the area is quite a big location to sort of explore if you want. And one of my personal favorite things about this is sort of the fighting arena. You can have certain enemies fight against each other and watch as the chaos unfolds. Like seriously, it really is quite fun uh, just to watch sort of two creatures fighting against each other and seeing which one will win. But aside from that, I mean, it's pretty obvious. This has every item in the game. There really isn't too much to really explain with this. It's quite a basic mod again. And uh, it's not going to be for all of you. You know, some people like these mods where there's pretty much everything in one area and they can pretty much go out and do what they want and use their imagination. Some people don't, but I wanted to showcase it anyway for those of you who do, as it's also one of the most downloaded mods available right now for the PlayStation 4. And that's pretty much it for this week's episode of five awesome mods to download. I do also plan to get a few 10 
sort of compilations out throughout the week and depending on how much you guys want to see this series I may even do it twice a week who knows you know if you guys do want to see this and you did enjoy the video today uh, be sure to let me know by leaving a like down below your support of course is greatly appreciated on the channel and I want to hear your guys feedback about how to continue this going forward because it, there's quite a bit of a predicament here as many of you will know um, with Xbox One and PlayStation 4, you know, the circumstances are very different. Xbox One allows external assets, which means that better mods uh, will be coming to the Xbox One, whereas PlayStation 4 doesn't allow external assets. So it puts me in this really weird position in making a video like this. You know, there's several ways I could go about it. I could split the series up and I'd do two different videos, one for Xbox One and one for PlayStation 4, or I could do something similar for what I did today where I kind of compile them both together and showcase what's available on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. But the problem with doing it this way is eventually down the line, when more crazier mods become available for Xbox One and I start showcasing them, then I feel like some people may get a little bit pissed off because, you know, I'm probably going to showcase this really cool Xbox One mod that just came out that just won't be available for the PlayStation 4. And at the same time, I'm showing off PlayStation 4 mods that just may not be as good as the Xbox One ones if you sort of get where I'm going with this. So it does put me in a bit of a predicament, but that's where I want to hear your guys' feedback as PlayStation 4 and Xbox users. What do you want to see from this series? Do you, want, do you want to see separate videos for the console that you guys play on? Or do you want to see them both compiled into one big video every week or something like that? So again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll really take you know all of it in uh, to consideration moving forward with this. But as always, hope you guys did enjoy this video today. Also, one more thing. I do plan on upping the quality of these videos in terms of you know, the in-video graphics and the gameplay. I've also got a really cool intro being made, similar to the one uh, that was done for Fallout 4, if you guys remember that one. Uh, one's being made for Skyrim right now as well. And uh, just general plans to sort of improve the quality going forward with this as well. So again, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you guys next time with a brand new video. Peace out.